Welcome everyone to the Nourishing Your Practice podcast. We're so excited to kick off HealCon today with this special podcast. It's our 24th show and it's our first video podcast. So it's a little different for us. We're not used to being in front of the camera. You usually just get the audio on these. So bear with Diana and I, because we're not quite used to this. I'm Kristen Burkett, one of your hosts, and I'm Diana Wally, the other host. Awesome. So I can't believe this is 24 shows. That's six months we've been recording. It's been just an amazing ride so far. We have connected with so many amazing people, so many practitioners that have just inspired us in so many ways. We feel like we have friends from coast to coast and talk about taking on the show on the road, maybe in the future, maybe live podcasts at HealCon next year when we're all together. So many places we can go with this. And it's been so fun starting this journey with you, Diana. Oh, it's, it's been amazing. And I'm just thinking about us being invited to Arizona to taste pastries at Anthony's and, and then us, um, you know, inviting uh, uh, just uh, this wonderful um, guest that we had to come stay with us if he comes to Colorado. So it's true, friends, friends from coast to coast, and it has been such a blast. It's really been fun. Yeah. So we, as always, we have a sponsor for our podcast and we have a very special sponsor today that um, looks a little like this. So <laughs> we want to thank Dry Farm Wines for sponsoring this, this podcast. And we're going to talk a little bit about them. You guys won't believe if you haven't experimented with these wines, how incredible they are. But first I want to toast to my amazing partner. Ah. To you, cheers. to the ride, <laughs> cheers. And to all of you out there that are joining us, cheers to you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting the show. We couldn't do this without you. So cheers. Cheers, absolutely. That's amazing. That's so good. Um, so you probably want to know what makes Dry Farm Wine so special. So I have some notes. Um, they, first of all, the customer service, Kristen knows the whole story. So we were, I, I, the minute we found out we were going to do this live show, um, I wanted to have some dry farm wine on hand. So I placed the order and there was a problem with shipping. It never got to me. Long story short, they knew we were doing the podcast. So they offered to overnight me a case of wine. <laughs> so 10 o'clock this morning, the UPS guy's knocking on my door with my wine and just incredible service. So, so know that that's a huge plus. Um, so there it's organic biodynamic, lower alcohol, um, which I appreciate. I know Kristen, <laughs> something you appreciate as well. It's keto, paleo friendly, sugar free, and it's also non-toxic. So there aren't any toxic ingredients and in then it has lower sulfites. Um, you probably don't know that most wines sold today are mass produced. And so they can include higher levels of sugar and there's 76 or some odd FDA approved chemicals that wine, I know why it's disgusting. Wine uh, um, companies can add, which is probably why so many times you hear from people that they drink wine and they don't feel good. That could be why I noticed that I, that I feel fantastic drinking this wine. So really this pure natural wine is, is rare. Um, dry farm wines vets every grower. They taste every wine, which is, I mean, it's a tough job, but somebody has got to do it like us, right? <laughs> I know when, when, when NAMP said that this was our sponsor, we were like, Oh, darn, that stinks. I know. Um, Again, the best customer service, you know, that when they called me uh, to make sure I had the wine this morning, they're like, okay, we love you. We're grateful for you. So these people are amazing. Um, this is really exciting. So for HealCon participants, for all of you, they're offering a special. So if you use the link dryfarmwines.com forward slash HealCon, you can get a bottle of wine for a penny when you make a purchase. So that's pretty incredible. So I, I'm guessing these wines are about $30 a bottle, if um, something are, are along those lines. This is a great value. So go to dryfarmwines.com forward slash HealCon and you can get a bottle of wine for a penny. So we hope that that's you do. Awesome. I yeah. want to show you the bottle. So I've had a subscription to Dry Farm. It's probably two years now or more that I've had my subscription. I love these wines. And what I, what I really love is that they send you these little labels that you can put on top of your wine, like on the cork. 
so that you know, like if there's anything else mixed in, you know which one is your <laughs> dry farm wine, because really it's the only ones I can drink that I feel decent with um, when I drink them. And which isn't super often, but I do occasionally like to have a drink, but I picked this one today. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's got the label has two women with their arms around each other. It's called Grololo. But I thought the two went, I thought that was perfect for today with Diana, you and I being here on the podcast together. So it's our shareable wine. I love that. And <laughs> I, I'm drinking a red uh, Spanish wine, but I wanted to show you. So when I opened my box, we're having red meat for dinner. So kind of like to pair the wine that way, but I, this is my absolute favorite. And I really wanted to open two. <laughs> this, isn't it so pretty? It, and it's, it, I don't know, it's just a beautiful bottle and the name, which I'm not going to embarrass myself and pronounce the it's, it's, it's an Italian wine, but it means peaceful living. So Aww. I thought that was, I know. And I think it's so beautiful. So thank you, dry farm wines. And we hope that you're all um, going to try that out and get that bottle of wine for a penny. Great to refer for your customers to, or for your clients that are looking for, you know, a, you know, if they're able to imbibe a little bit, it's nice right. to have a healthy choice or a healthier choice. So anyway, um, I know I've referred them many times to, to clients and friends and family members too. Yeah. And it makes the podcast a little more fun. It does. <laughs> yeah. We got to keep each other on track. <laughs> All right. So we know that, um, We've been told that uh, through comments to NEMP, some of you would like to get to know us a little bit more. Uh, we've interviewed a lot of guests, but we've not really talked much about ourselves. So NEMP asked us to introduce ourselves and tell you a little bit more about us uh, so that you feel a little closer to us and understand where we come from and, and our stories. So Diana, why don't you start us off and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, okay, well, thank you. Um, I know it's funny to have the tables turned, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, uh, I live in Colorado, just outside of Boulder, uh, beautiful place. And it's Kristen and I, it's really nice. We actually live, both live in Colorado, just on different sides of Denver. I'm to the North and she's from the South. So we don't get to see each other in person that much, but it's nice to know that we live close together um, and we see each other when we can. So um, I've lived in Colorado for about 25, 26 years. I'm originally from New England and I went to the University of New Hampshire and uh, originally got my degree in journalism and worked in TV news for a period of time, lesser known fact. People are always like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. But I really, I took a lot from those days. A lot of, I really enjoy writing. Uh, so I, you know, keep an active blog and I, I, I try to, um, you know, I do newsletters for our local rec center and things like that. So I really, I really try to keep my hand in writing because I enjoy that. And the podcast is kind of like, you know, TV news. So especially the video. Um, so anyway, I uh, moved to Colorado and then I, uh, you know, decided to have children and stayed home with my kiddos. So this is kind of where my story begins of how my on-ramp to nutrition. So our youngest daughter, when she was born pretty much right away, developed pretty severe eczema and the kind kind of eczema that was bleeding, weeping, oh. really, really terrible. And, you know, we would bring her out and people would say, oh my goodness, what's wrong with your baby? It was that obvious, you know, oh. cried all the time, um, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. And of course I was crying all the time. <laughs> so baby cries, mom cries. And you know, we, we, of course, this was way before Dr. Google, this was, um, you know, close to 20 years ago now. So, so a long time ago before there was a lot of information on the internet and we weren't quite sure what to do. So our first line of, um, or the first thing that we decided to do was go to our medical doctor and ended up being referred to a specialist in pediatrics who diagnosed her with severe atopic dermatitis and told us this was a lifelong challenge. Oh. And the only thing that they had to help us was some sort of topical medication that her words, the physician's words were that it's been linked to lymphoma, but don't worry about it um, because the research isn't really complete. We're like, uh, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. So luck, just lucky where we live in Boulder um, there, we did have 
access to some holistic practitioners, but this was really new back then. So we, we kind of went from person to person to person until we found this wonderful doctor of oriental medicine that was able to help us over about a two year period. He's still our family physician. Um, he's just amazing. So, um, that, you know, super exciting. So that, then I decided, I think I want to go back to school for nutrition. I was so intrigued by how, you know, the, these natural modalities through food and, um, and acupuncture and, and all of that could help our daughter. And it was such an amazing turnaround. Even our physician said, you know, I would never take my, someone in my family to someone like that, you know, meeting at, meeting at doctor of oriental medicine, but we, I can't argue with the success. This is absolutely incredible. So, um, so went back to school for nutrition and, and at that point I once, so the school Kristen and I went to together, um, I, you could graduate uh, with your master's after it took me four years, but you could get a, sort of an intermediary degree and then be able to start practicing. So after that first degree, I started practicing and started getting a lot of people from the community, tons of referrals, was super busy and loved it. It was the most satisfying work, helping families, working with children. But I, um, through that, was still going to school. So finishing up my master in nutrition therapy, degree, uh, be trying to be mom, trying to be volunteer extraordinaire, you know, do all the things work. So I burned myself out really hit rock bottom. Um, and like, it's probably a very familiar story. Right. And I thought, you know, how can this happen to me? This is what I, I do, but it did. And, um, I luckily had the resources, the, the knowledge to pull myself out of that. But then it was fascinating because I started attracting clients that were in the same situation. So women about my age, you know, dealing with burnout. And it was just this beautiful transformation in my practice to that, to the, those types of clients. Uh, it was just amazing how it worked. And I've heard that, that story from others is that you kind of attract the people that, that you should be working with and want to work with. And um, that really blends itself beautifully with the work that Kristen and I do together at restoreforyou.com. Um, so, you know, we, we love to work with women on hormone balancing, um, healthy aging, which is exactly what I do in my own practice. And of course, together, Kristen and I uh, have online programs for practitioners and for individual clients. So that's really my story, kind of a long, a long way to get to where I am, but I'm so grateful for what I went through because it, you know, it, it wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be where I am today without going through all of those, um, ups and downs and yeah. Uh, and, and since then you've added the fitness part to your practice. I so do. Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I um, got my certification in personal training. And it's really a, um, a been a passion of mine for a long time. And on the training side, I, I just because of I work at a local rec center, and we do have a large uh, population of seniors, it is my favorite demographic to work with on mm -hmm. the, the fitness side. And my, one of the benefits is that I, I, oh, every time I get a new client, I'm always like, okay, tell me your secrets. Cause I'm meeting with people in their seventies and eighties that are still working out going strong. So I have a whole notebook full of all of these, um, you know, secrets of these people that are living these long, beautiful lives. So I, I, I learned so much from, their wisdom that they'll share with me. And, and, and I also really like to, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, maintain your health and vitality just through one aspect, like just through diet or just through fitness. So I like combining those and seeing how people get just incredible results, marrying both of those, um, modalities. So absolutely. Well, holistic has a, has the meaning, right. right? Yeah. Right. Whole person. That's right. Yeah. So I'm dying to hear your story. <laughs> yeah. Like you haven't heard it before. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, um, so I've always been interested in health. I was pre-med. I was biology and chemistry major in college, but uh, I got to the end and I just couldn't commit the time for med school. And there's just something in my heart that said it just wasn't the right thing to do. And I don't know why, but anyway, so I went into healthcare administration for several years and I focused on quality improvement where I worked with a lot of physicians and looking at care models and how 
care was being delivered in the hospital and how surgical procedures were being done and how to get better outcomes. So I had this big, big broad experience on the clinical side, but not being a clinician. And I love that, but I always felt like we never were really getting to the root. Like we, we were always making things better in the hospital situation, but people were still coming back. They weren't actually <laughs> getting better. So something was missing and I just didn't know back then what it was, but I left when my kiddos were born. I wanted to be home with them for a while. I waited a long time to have my kiddos. So I was ready to be home with them. Um, and then when my youngest was about two, I had this early breast cancer diagnosis and um, I was really fortunate. I got by with the lumpectomy and um, didn't have to have any follow-up treatment and clear margins, all of that, thankfully. But the surgeon told me, he said, last thing he left me with was, I had an equal chance of it coming back on either side at any time. And I thought, oh my gosh, I just went through all this and now I'm not done, maybe, possibly. I, and it just, it, it just really got to me. And I just thought, I can't live like this. I can't live in fear that it might come back. So I wanted to understand more. And more importantly, I wanted to know what I could do to prevent or help prevent, I know we can't control everything, but help prevent it from happening later in my life or you know, God forbid in my daughter's life at some point, because who knew what genetic aspects might be involved that, you know, she might be susceptible. So like everything, I went deep. <laughs> I went deep into research, um, trying to figure it all out. And there were a couple of holistic books that really turned me on to this whole other side of medicine that was the holistic side and understanding all of these other things that can contribute. And um, as I got more knowledgeable, my friends started asking me questions and asking me advice. And I got really uncomfortable <laughs> because this was all self-research. So I, but I had, it struck such a passion in me and I felt like I'd figured out the side of healthcare that I was really called to that I never found in the beginning. And so I went back to school. I wanted to learn from trusted information. I thought, well, at least if I go to school, the sources that I'm going to be studying are respected sources and I can feel confident about giving advice from that point on. So did that, started my practice. It's called Nourishing Transformations. Did that, so I started that about six years ago and have focused primarily on gut health, female hormone balancing and healthy aging. Um, I'd say like my real passion, I think that came out of all of this is helping others advocate for themselves for their health and taking charge of their health. I don't like to see people get stuck in that victim mentality. And I feel like our current healthcare system has people feeling like they don't have any control and they're at the whim of whatever their physician prescribes them for whatever health condition they're gonna end up being in. And I, I just don't feel like that's true. And so I love empowering others for them to start understanding their health and what they can do to take charge and what they can take control of so that they don't have to be a victim. And that's, to me, that's, that's the core of all of it. No matter if we're working on a gut issue, if we're working on female health, whatever the issue might be, advocating and understanding how your body is working to get to the state that it's in and how to get it back in balance. To me, that's where it's, where it's at. So Diane and I both went to Nutrition Therapy Institute here in Denver. Um, we graduated within a few months of each other which was kind of fun. We got our board certifications right around the same time. We're pretty close. And then we met through a local networking group at the time. Um, some alum from our school were getting together on a monthly basis at a library uh, downtown. So we would all meet for a monthly meeting, which was really fun. It was really great to get to know other nutrition professionals. And we just hit it off. It was so, I don't know how or why, but something just clicked for us. We both have kids that are similar ages. We share a similar work ethic. We have similar passions for helping women. We want women to feel their best. And it's like the ideas and the brainstorming just started coming out of us every time we got together. So from there, we just started putting those ideas to life. And over time, it's just more has developed and it's been really fun. And it's been um, just a pleasure to work with a colleague to create new programs and have somebody to bounce ideas off of. But I think our biggest challenge is there's just never enough time in the day to 
do everything we want to do. But in any case, it's been fun. Um, and that's how we started our, our joint practice together. And so I love doing our podcasts for the NAMP because we get to actually see each other when we record our calls, our, our episodes, because we do the Zoom like this so we can see each other and we just, you know, submit the audio to NAMP, but it's always a treat to get to see you and, and do that. Um, so anyway, and I probably should just say a little bit about how the podcast came to be, mm -hmm. because a lot of people have asked us that question. And I think just part of this whole process and doing some volunteer work for the NAMP, being on a couple of different committees there, we realized, you know, for ourselves personally and for the people that we were working with, you know, being a nutrition therapist or a holistic nutrition professional, it can be an isolating job because you're working either with clients or a lot of times just one-on-one -on -one with people or however you do it, you don't typically get to interact with other professionals very often, which is why HealCon is so wonderful because we actually get to connect. But in the between times, we really don't get that opportunity. So we had this idea, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, wouldn't it be fun to do a podcast and get to talk to other nutrition professionals and learn about them and connect and feel more confident about what we're doing and get ideas and there's so much to share. And, you know, we just kind of threw that around for a while and worked with NAMP and it, it finally, it came to fruition. And here we are now we're six months later and, and doing this live podcast. So Anyway, that's kind of how Diana and I came to be in our field in our particular um, independent practices and came together for NAMP and now here with you for HealCon. Yeah, I feel so lucky. First of all, I, I've heard your story so many times, like you said, but it gives me goosebumps every time. <laughs> and I'm just so glad you're here and you're healthy and, and that you're helping so many people. Um, so yeah, and, and just kind of some funny behind the scenes with the podcast that you brought up. So if anyone out there thinks that, that they can't do something, just give it a try because people will say that they're like, how do how do you, how did you guys know how to do a podcast? We're like, we didn't. And most everything we do, we don't know how to do it. We didn't know how to create online programs. We didn't know how to do a podcast, but we always just say to one another, let's just try. Let's just do it. Uh, and I mean, the, the support that we get at MP, NAMP is incredible. So, you know, we do the production. So we we hire, uh, sorry, not hire, we vet the guests and, and, you know, schedule them and all of that. But NAMP has the most wonderful web designer um, who assists us with editing the podcast and putting them up on the website. And then the most fabulous Instagram social media person who does that side of the business. So we, we basically get to produce the podcast and then send it over, but it's, it's, you know, just a learning experience. So, you know, even when we're starting, we're like, okay, um, Kristen, start the timer. Okay. I got to record, you know, all of these little <laughs> kind of behind the scene things that, that we're still working out, but hopefully you would agree that it comes out polished and, but it's fun and that you enjoy the guests that we're bringing to you. And we are always open to new ideas, to new guests. So connect with us. Um, but I, I, we hope, we really hope that you're enjoying it as half as much as we are. Yeah, absolutely. And just know, I mean, it's just a labor of, lo labor of love for Diana and I, we really enjoy doing it. We are not professional podcasters and we don't pretend to be, but we are, you know, we're committed to you and we're committed to each other and committed to our field. And so hopefully we're bringing you insights and ideas and connections and hopefully it's it's enriching your lives as well to to be a part of that journey with us. Yeah. Well, before we move on, Kristen, how do you feel about a couple Brene Brown type rapid fire questions? Yeah, that sounds like fun. Okay. Cuz okay. have you you've listened to her podcast cuz you sent me yeah. yeah, I know. And I, we'll just do a couple. Okay. So first one is what is your favorite meal? Oh my God. I hate this question. No, I, I don't hate it. But my family asks me this all the time. Like my birthday's coming up They're like, yes. what do you want for your birthday? I'm like, I don't know. I love all food. That's my biggest problem is I think I love, I love every, there's like two foods in this whole world that I don't like. So what are they hard for me? I don't like olives. Oh. <laughs> I know that's crazy, but so olives are like one thing I don't like. And I can't even think of what the other one is. It's probably the only thing. But anyway, I guess it would probably be seafood, like 
some type of a seafood dish with vegetables and maybe some kind of a, a, a yummy different vegetable puree or something with it or something like that. But I, I love fresh seafood. So that's probably my favorite dish. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I think if I'm in Colorado, like, like a, a really nice steak, I do butcher box. So I, I think you do. Yeah, I do. So, yeah. yeah. Order butcher. So like a really nice butcher box steak and a bunch of, I have an obsession with broccoli, like a bunch of broccoli <laughs> and some little roasted potatoes on the side. But if I'm in new England, I'm going to go for lobster. So that like, I could embarrass myself with how much lobster I can, <laughs> I can eat True new Englander. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you at all. Yeah. yeah. And the food, <laughs> this is this is so sad being a nutritionist, but the food that I don't like is sardines and they're so healthy for oh, you. God. Okay, so that's the second one. I know. I didn't say that. I'm so sorry for any no. of you that are like totally into it. I can't. I just I, I want to. I want to like them. I know. But I eat a ton really of fun. salmon. I Me really too. Do. Me too. Well, they're we're we're fine. We're good. Okay. We have lovely skin, lovely glowing skin. Okay. So number two, what is on your nightstand right now? Oh, on my nightstand. Okay. So I have my little calming lavender spray that I put on my pillow and I have a family photo that we just took right before my son left for college this last year. So I like to look at him and say goodnight to him before I go. And then I have several books. Um, I wish I could say there are fun books. I know you should read something that's more lighthearted and all of that before you go to bed, but I don't really have time to read the books that I want to during the day. So they're usually geeky health related books about something that I'm wanting to learn about. So right now I've got um, Why We Get Sick by Ben Bickman is the one. I oh, I, I've heard him on several podcasts. I love that guy. Yeah. 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 So, but really then good. there's the other six that are waiting for me to get to them. And what about you? What do you have? Yeah. So I also love books. I'm such a book hog and, and <laughs> I have, I, I have like my entire night table is stacked. And then I have a little shelf underneath that's all stacked because I like, I, you know, I want to have several choices because I'm not sure what kind of mood I'm going to be in. Do I want to read something nutrition? Do I want to read, read something fun? So I have an embarrassingly high stack of books <laughs> and I also have an eye mask and mouth tape. So I look, I look so glamorous when I go to sleep because I have my eye mask and my mouth tape, but I'm, I'm, I've been experimenting with mouth taping. Have you tried that? No, I'm afraid to, but I've gotten much, much better at breathing out of my nose, but mm-hmm. I had so many sinus problems for so many years that the taping scares me. Okay. But it's I really just, purposely try. Yeah. To it's just, I'm a total mouth breather. So it's just a little strip, but I was reading James Nestor's book, breathe. Mm-hmm. And that's what inspired me. So, um, so yeah. And some, magnesium. what does your husband think of all this? Oh, <laughs> Sorry, that's such a good question. I think he's just used to it. This is the funniest part about the mouth tape is so, so I'll get like all snuggled in my magnesium spray and my eye mask and my mouth tape. And then he'll ask, he'll say, oh, so like, ask me a question. I'm like, and he's like, oh, you have your mouth tape on. I know this is like oversharing, but anyway, uh, you know, we're, we're to, we're, it's Brene Brown. She would, she would love it. No, so I, have, I have like hair yeah. sticking out. Okay. So okay. Um, here, I'm going to ask you one now. Yeah, so okay. give me a snapshot of an ordinary moment in your life that brings you great joy. I, I two really, well, I'm going to have to, can I do two? Cause two come yes. to mind. Okay. So one is like when my whole family is in the kitchen you know, making dinner together and just hanging out and talking and maybe music on and oh, just like makes me so happy. And then I think also um, just if my daughters, I have, my daughters are pretty close in age, both in high school. And I think when like they run upstairs and they're in one of their bedrooms and both giggling together and talking and like, you know, about stuff going on at school and, oh, it just makes, I know I'm just like, this is, these are the days it makes me really happy. So what about you? Um, okay. So I have two also. So, um, I, I'm very emotional these days because my son did go to leave for college in the fall and it's been a very tumultuous year with COVID and everything and him being away and all that. So anyway, I miss him desperately. So um, when he comes home, he's not too far away. He's just in Fort Collins, which is a couple hours from here. So he'll come home on occasion. And when we have family dinners together and I get all, all of us around the table, I really love that. And my daughter, <laughs> when his hair gets too long, she'll braid his hair. And it's just really fun to <laughs> watch them together. 
Um, anyway, so yeah, it's just, I guess just having the family together. But then the other one is um, my goofy black golden doodle. So I take her to the dog park every morning, right after my daughter gets to school. That's where we go. We head to the dog park and she has her puppy play group. And there's four of them that meet there every morning and they go crazy together. And she has so much fun. And I don't care what is going on in my world at the moment or that day, but it takes everything off because they just play like there's no tomorrow and it's just fun to watch them. So anyway, it lightens my load every single morning. So I love that. Oh, I love that too. Yeah. Bre Brene would be so proud. Brene, you have to have, Brene should have us on her podcast or we could have, or her. We could have her. I think, yeah. I think we need to invite her. I like her. that idea. Just yeah. saying. I know. All right. We'll, we'll work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. So switching gears uh, to conference, um, which is why we're here to talk about, um, you know, Kristen and I are no strangers to conference. We've been to several and guys, once COVID's over and we can be back in person, if you haven't been, please make it a priority. It is the most incredible opportunity to, it's giving me goosebumps, like to be with your colleagues in in invite like just this incredible learning environment. Um, the food is incredible. Just getting together for these incredible meals with colleagues to discuss all things health and nutrition. It's it's a, a remarkable remarkable weekend. So once we're back um, in, live in person, I hope that you'll consider joining us. Lifelong so, friends, you will make new lifelong friends. It is amazing. Yeah. That is so well said. That is ex exactly right. So, you know, not only have we attended uh, several conferences, but we actually, believe it or not, Kristen, it's been four years. I can't believe it's we, been that long. So 2017 up in Portland, Kristen and I uh, presented on innovations in female hormone balancing. It was an incredible opportunity um, to present at conference and uh, just, yeah, just, just felt very blessed to be able to do that. So we're definitely, yeah. um, no uh strangers to this yeah. amazing event and love that it's virtual i mean at least you know we get to at least have this venue it's better than not having it at all and i think naamp has done such a marvelous job of finding a platform and a way to bring people together as much as possible and make it as interactive as possible and we hope all of you will you know participate in the different things and we'll talk about those in a minute but um, you know, I, one of the biggest draws, of course, aside from the friendships and the food, which, you know, I can't speak enough about, but we have these amazing presenters every year and so much education, so much information. And I don't know, it just, if you're a geek like me, like science geek, like I think most of us are in one way or another, it will bring out that side of you, like you wouldn't even believe, but um, we've had the privilege of interviewing several of the HealCon speakers um, for the podcast and getting to know them a little bit beforehand. And they're just, they're all so unique and bring so much to the table. And we got, you know, kind of a sneak peek into their, into what they're going to be presenting. And so if you've been listening to the podcast prior to um, this particular event, um, you probably heard some of those, like, um, Kathy, do you remember Kathy, Diana? Oh my God, she's super smart. Um, she is a building biology environmental consultant and a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist. Wow, how do you ever get to that? I mean, that's amazing. But she helps people get to their optimal health by addressing the body, mind, and home, which is one aspect that probably a lot of us don't really know how to bring in. And her heel con topic is improving client outcomes by addressing EMF exposure. And I know it is just gonna be a fascinating talk. And I just love talking to her so much that I think we can get from her. Oh, definitely. Yeah, she so unique. I, I've never met another practitioner that has such a unique take on how to incorporate the home into wellness. And I mean, we were picking her brain off air. So I, I yeah, I cannot wait for her presentation. Yeah. Um, and then there's Ed. Oh, God, I love Ed. Ed I love Ed Bowman. You guys know that name. I'm sure yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so much love with Ed. And then I think, I don't know how long we stayed, stayed after the podcast <laughs> for the post We like just chatting and chatting. And he, you guys, like his name is synonymous with health and wellness. I, I'm sure that, that you recognize his name, but listen to this. So his 
I mean, he did more before I was born than, I mean, I, I've, it's incredible. So he was in law, he was an attorney. So he went from law school to organic farming. And this was Kristen, like back in the seventies before yeah. it was trendy. Yeah. Um, and then he lived on the East coast and the West coast. He went to medical school and he was an educator and a student. And now he's in the nonprofit sector unbelievable breadth of a career. He's so humble. He's so giving. And he still now is so motivated to, um, you know, improve the wellness industry. So right now he runs um, Bowman Wellness, which is a nonprofit um, that a culture's wellness through healing foods, arts, and community. Incredible work and just an incredible person. I cannot wait to hear his presentation. And just, you just have to hear um, his story. And, you know, his past, it's it's unbelievable. And, and his, his, his passion energy, for how he yes. gives back. I mean, that's amazing to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. And then, oh, Diane Ginsburg, we talked to her. Oh Firecracker. my God, what a thought. You, you took the words out of my mouth. Firecracker. <laughs> that's the word that comes to mind. She is so energetic. If I had one pinky of the energy that woman has. Oh my God, I can't imagine what I could accomplish, but she's an OBG, OBGYN and she specializes in optimal hormone balance and overall healthy aging, but she is, she's amazing. She's a doctor, a mother, she's a black belt in Taekwondo. She is an accomplished marathon runner. Um, she's an Ironman triathlete. I don't know how she does it all. And then she does all of these incredible YouTube videos that are on the web for free with all kinds of content on the stuff that she's doing in her practice. She, she's amazing. And, you know, I just felt so honored the way she values nutrition in her practice. And she has nutritionists and health coaches in her practice and she utilizes them as part of her core team. She doesn't just see it as an aside. She's like, no, this is it. This is a huge part of it. She gets it. And so I, I know if you guys, when you listen to her presentation, you're just going to be wowed and really respectful that there are these medical OB gins that get it and they're growing and they're finding us, we're finding them. And she's helping to bridge that gap and help bring us together. And so an amazing presentation I know she's bringing. Yeah, well said. And I, I think you and I had a discussion after meeting her, like, how is it humanly possible to do everything she's doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you said it. Firecracker is um, is a perfect description. I cannot wait to, to hear her presentation. Um, and then also loved Marissa. Oh, what a sweetheart. So she's a opening keynote speaker and also very unique. Um, as far as what she does in her practice, but she, I think Kristen, when we met with her, she was like snuggled on her couch with a cup of tea, like just exudes peace and tranquility, but there's like badassery to steal a Brene Brown term, like exactly. definitely badassery underneath there. Yes. Um, so she's a holistic life coach and corporate wellness coach. And she's the CEO of the well studio, which I think is such a, such a cool name. It's a boutique wellness coaching firm. Um, and she also does, offers like a one-year transformational coaching program for women to help guide them through redesigning their life, through you know um, pursuing their dreams personally, professionally. She's phenomenal, just just a powerhouse. But yet has this just lovely um, air around her that just makes you want to relax. I, I think after the conversation with her, I was just like, oh, so so relaxed, like peaceful. Relaxing. Yeah. I know. And now, so I'm following her on Instagram now and oh my God, she's a wonderful Instagram. I don't know, is it a blogger or a poster? I am not yeah, I up know. with the times guys. I'm I am really sorry. I'm not, I'm trying, <laughs> but I'm not, but anyway, her Instagram stuff is awesome. It just, it, she's just so real. Yes. And, yeah. And you know, if you haven't listened to the um, pre-conference episodes of the podcast, where we go and interview these different, um, presenters that we've just described, you might want to do that because it really will help you feel connected to these people in a different way, rather than just somebody up there presenting information. When you hear about their heart of what goes into these presentations and why they chose to present and why they think it's important, it just brings a whole different dimension 
to the entire presentation. So anyway, at some point, if you get a chance to, to listen to those, I, I would encourage it. And then after the conference, we're gonna interview a few other of the presenters. So we'll have a good, I don't know, probably eight or so mm -hmm. of the presenters with yeah. you know, a little bit of their backstory. And again, connection, getting us to know some of these people a little bit better and more holistically. Yeah. No, I think that that's true. And it's, and you don't feel like if you hear them present that you can't listen to the podcast as well, because it's different information. So we don't give away any of the presentation yeah. in the podcast, like as to Kristen's point, it's really getting to know the person and it is worth, they are all worth listening to. I mean, really, really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Let's, um, we're, we're going to run out of time. I know as usual. <laughs> So let's talk quickly about some of the fun things that we all get to participate in during the conference, even though they can't, we can't be together. There's some really fun things lined up. So Diana, start us off. So we hope that, you know, we see you all tomorrow morning for the um, conference meditation kickoff with Carrie McClure, and that's tomorrow morning, Friday at nine Pacific. Um, so Carrie's mindfulness practice will help you restore balance in your mind, your relationships, your work, your health. She's going to teach us some various meditation techniques and other nuggets of wisdom that will help ease our journey through the world with a kind, open heart. I mean, does that sound amazing? So we, we definitely want to see you there. And then I think I'm going to want to record that so that I can do that every day. <laughs> because what a Brilliant. great day, right? Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And then um, Friday evening, 530 Pacific time, we have our welcome reception and happy hour. So grab a mocktail or a glass of dry farm wine mm -hmm. and, um, and let's hang out since we can't do it in person. Let's hang out together this way. And um, after a great day of learning, get ready for some fun. There's going to be a trivia game on deck and some other fun things. So great way to communicate, um, you know, make some eye contact with people, some of your colleagues and that kind of thing. So we hope you'll join us then. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah. And I'm so proud of NAMP for putting all this cool stuff together. Like this is, because it, it makes you feel like you're really there. You're really part yeah. of it. Um, and I love, so Saturday at 8 a.m. Pacific is the brunch and munch. How cute is that? So, you know, even as Kristen said, we can't all be together in person. This will be a great way to still connect. So grab some organic tea, organic coffee, you know, a smoothie, whatever your go-to favorite morning treat is. No wine though. So we don't want to see any wine at the brunch and munch that would that would not be good um <laughs> uh, and there'll be a google shared folder you'll get for, more information about so you can upload and share your favorite recipes which is i cannot wait for that because our people have the best recipes so i'm really looking forward to that and i'm glad our people do because i don't i am not the queen of making recipes but i am the master at preparing other people's recipes so for sure i cannot wait to um get some of your recipes and then maybe we'll brag about some of them on the podcast. That's a great idea. Yeah. We'll, um, idea. we'll make some of them ourselves and tell you what we think. So yeah, love we'd love to see some of those. And then finally, um, selfie time. Okay. This could be really fun. If you bought some HeelCon swag, a t-shirt, sweatshirt, tank top, whatever during, um, before the conference, we'd love to have you put that on and post a selfie of yourself in that on Instagram, um, tag yourself, um, do the tag at NANP official and you'll get featured um, in this in one of the NANP stories during the conference. Um, be sure you follow Instagram. If you're not following NANP on Instagram already, you'll want to load that up because I'm sure there's that Whitney is going to put all kinds of fun stuff um, through the stories on Instagram through conference. So you'll want to do that. And you know what? Even if you don't have a HeelCon swag, we'd still love to see your selfies. Post something else you know, related to holistic nutrition and what you're doing in your practice. And yeah, let's just, let's get the fun going. I love it. I love sure. it. So yeah. anything else you want to say about conference before we wrap up? I'm just so excited for the presentations. I was looking at the lineup and other than the um, presenters we've already talked about, there are so many I cannot wait for. Um, I mean, I, I would mention some, but gosh, there's just so many. I, I know. <laughs> I'm drooling. I'm drooling know, on my laptop. Too. And I'm excited to get my CEUs at the same time. So it's always nice to benefit from that um, by listening to the presentations and, and doing the little, the mini exams at the end so that we can get those CEUs. But um, no, I, there's, 
we'd take too much time, I think, if we started talking about all of the different individual ones. So um, hopefully you guys have looked at the lineup. You've um, identified you know, what your favorites are going to be to shoot for, to make sure you listen to, and you'll join us throughout. Pick a good breakout session that you want to participate in. And um, yeah, we're just excited for the weekend and, and to get going with it. Yeah. And like always, we ran out of time way too soon. This yeah. was so much fun. One more toast to you, my friend and amazing partner. And to all of you out there at HealCon. Absolutely. So we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at Carrie's Meditation. So I better stop drinking the wine. Yeah. Can't wait to see you there at the meditation. And join us next week for a new podcast with another amazing conference speaker. We're not going to give it away, but you don't want to miss this one. Thank you all for joining us. And we can't wait to see you next time. Yep. Great to see you all.